Hi guys, so today I want to talk to you about senescent cells, what they are, what they have to do with aging, and how you can get rid of them with the help of a natural substance. Well, at least some of them. Senescent cells are the so-called zombie cells. I think that they're called zombie cells because they're not quite dead, but they're not really alive. And they create this toxic microenvironment around them. And this environment can actually affect others to become zombie cells as well. So, uh, induced senescence. But, uh, they are used. They are useful in the body because the body uses them, for instance, when it comes to cancer. So, if you can turn a cancer cell into a zombie cell, then it can no longer divide, and so the cancer tumor cannot grow. And, as a senescent cell, it will be secreting all kinds of pro-inflammatory secretions, and these will alert the immune system, and so the immune system should come and get rid of this senescent cell. Also, senescent cells are actually used when it comes to embryos, when the body is starting to be sculpted, there are places where you want to take away cells. And you, when you want to take away the cells, that's when senescence comes in. Those cells become senescent, and then the immune system just takes those cells away. However, as we age, we tend to get more and more of these senescent cells. And as the percentage increases in our body, the problem is that they give off these toxic pro-inflammatory secretions. And so they create a low-grade inflammation in your body. And as you might know, low-grade infl inflammation leads to all kinds of uh, degenerative diseases. Actually, pretty much most of them, if not all. And so, the probability of getting the, these diseases increases as we age because we have more and more inflammations in the body. Also, this may be interesting. Uh, here, we can tie this with the previous video that I did. I did it on why NAD levels decline with age. And I told you that this was because of CD38. Now, why do we have more CD38? Because of low-grade inflammation. So here you can see how the senescent cells may affect CD38, which may reduce our NAD levels in the body, which will reduce uh, uh, our energy levels because of that. And with that, it will reduce our ability to um, repair DNA damage, and it will reduce our ability to silence age-related pathways, and it will reduce our ability to communicate within the cell. So the, our own DNA communicating with the DNA that came in with the mitochondria, for instance, that communication also tends to break down. All of this as side effects. It's a, a downward spiral when it comes to aging in that sense. The first way is the most natural way. And the less expensive way, well, the least expensive way perhaps, even, least, uh, even less expensive than your regular life because it has to do with fasting. If you do a five-day fast, you can actually go deep into autophagy and you can start removing your senescent cells. And the thing is that if you do a fast that is as long as five days, when you start eating, you will actually get a renewal in your immune system. So you will get a new immune system. You will boost it. An immune system uh, that is working is very important getting rid of senescent cells. So, 
fasting for five days, maybe once a year, once every six months, depending on how old you are, may be an interesting idea. Now, there are also senolytic substances. So a senolytic is something that kills senescent cells in your body. And there are drugs that do that, but usually drugs have side effects. And um, the biohacking community was uh, often talking about using quercetin, which is a natural substance, a flavonoid, and using it together with uh, dasetinib, which is a, a chemotherapy drug. And it's it has a lot of negative effects as well. And so it might not be maybe uh, the healthiest option to do that. But some people uh, did that because it seemed to be uh, an effective senolytic. However, quercetin on its own doesn't seem to be effective in that sense. Um, now, I have a theory and I'm kind of wondering because there is, um, there is another natural substance that has the same target as the satinib. So I'm kind of wondering if it's possible to take quercetin together with this uh, other substance, but there are nobody that, to my knowledge, has done it, and I don't know of any studies related to this. So this is just my personal um, um, curiosity, I guess. But what we do know is that there is a natural substance, facetin, which is also a flavonoid, like quercetin. It actually goes through the uh, blood-brain barrier. It's a neurotropic. It's uh, neuroprotective. It's anti-inflammatory. Uh, it actually helps with allergies also. It, reduce, uh, or it increases glutath glutathione. Uh, so it's very nice as a supplement and there are people who take facetin maybe 100 to 150 milligrams per day and they get these positive effects from it. However, uh, there's a study in mice that shows that if you take more facetin then you will get a senolytic effect from it. However, this has to be a larger quantity of facetin. It cannot be uh, the 100 or 150 milligrams. That's just not enough to get the senolytic effect. And uh, the study in mice was really interesting because uh, this was one of the things they saw, that how much you take really makes all the difference. And the, the other really interesting thing is that if you give it to young mice, you actually also kill uh, senescent cells. It turns out that you kill from 25 to some 50% of the senescent cells, depending on which tissue you're looking at. And it's very interesting because when they compared mice that had not been treated with facetin and mice that had gone through this uh, senolytic treatment for five days in a row, as they became older, you could see that the treated mice had less senescent cells than the untreated ones. So the idea is that actually, even though you might not feel any effect uh, or health effect that might be evident when you're young and doing this, you will be getting an increased health span. So the probability of getting diseases will be reduced as you age. Uh, so it may actually be interesting to do even when you're younger, not just for uh, people over 60 or even maybe in your 30s, you might be interested in trying this at some point. Now, uh, it's also interesting to see that the study showed that older mice also had uh, the same benefits from uh, senolytic uh, treatment with um, with facetin and um, however and, and there are studies now going on there are clinical trials I think 
there's um, the Mayo Clinic that has uh, some cl clinical trials going on right now. And for humans, they are looking at 20 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, so that would mean, for instance, if I weigh, say, 60 kilograms, I'd have to take 1,200 uh, milligrams of facetin per day. And they, they look at different groups, and uh, they usually do it for two days in a row. Uh, the mice in the study did it for five days. So, um, but of course, five days for a mouse is a lot, um, a lot longer than for a human being. But maybe that's something interesting. Uh, in, I guess, I don't know if it's in a few years that we will see uh, the outcomes of all of these different facet and studies in human beings. And it's interesting to see that there are people who have done this, uh, who have taken facetin for a couple of days in doses similar to this, 20 uh, milligrams per kilogram. And it's very interesting to see that the effects that they get, well, this is all anecdotal, so this isn't a study or anything, but the effects that they get seem to correlate well with the mouse study because they see that their allergies improve. They see that um, uh, degen degenerative diseases improve. Um, they see that um, their cognitive ability improves. They don't search for words as much as they used to. They remember things easily and they feel clarity when it comes to thinking. Uh, and so that's interesting. Also, when younger people do it, very often they don't really feel any particular effects, but probably it has a positive effect on their health span without them knowing it at the time or without them feeling it at the time. So this is an interesting part. So if you want to reduce your senescent cells, what can you do? Well, fasting, five day fasts, uh, at least five days, because then you will be sure that you ha will have gotten into deep autophagy and you will be boosting your immune system. Also, possibly, if you're adventurous and want to try something that is not recommended by anyone yet, because there are only clinical trials going on, uh, then facetin may be interesting. And it's interesting because it's a natural substance, so it doesn't seem to have any toxic effects at least from what we see right now. Uh, the only side effects that have been reported when taking facetin are um, very transitory, uh, some lightheadedness, um, a headache maybe. Uh, some people have felt some itching or burning, light itching or burning sensation, uh, especially in the skin but in different parts of the body. So these are some of the things that people have felt um, sometime after taking, like a few hours, an hour, a few hours after taking satin, uh, but it goes away. And then afterwards they have the positive effects, if there are positive if effects that they can actually feel. Okay, so this was it for today. And uh, I will see you in the next video. enjoyed this video, please sponsor me on Patreon. Even a small amount will really make a difference for me.